And I'm Serenity. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. If it is your first time with us, if you would text the word CONNECT to 501-510-6020, we have a free gift for you. And we just want to say thank you for being here. And we want to make you feel like you are part of the family. So please yes. do that. Take advantage of a free gift. Yep. So today is our first... It's the first week of Cross Equals Love. Woo! This is an amazing series. We love doing it. We do it every year. It's part of who we are as a church. And you really don't want to miss this because it is so amazing. Um, if you want to be involved with the series, um, you can submit a picture. Just turn anything into a Cross Equals Love. You yep, can turn, yep. make a picture in sand, draw a picture, be creative with it. Yes, and make sure to tag us. Um, on you can do Facebook or Instagram. Um, just tag Encounter Church TV. I don't know. Tag Encounters page. I don't know what. Sorry, the handles are. But here, let's show them our our cross equals love. That's our submission. Yeah. <laughs> um, we will make sure to tag the church. Um, we also have Love Day coming up. Yes. So, oh yeah. So Love Day is this Saturday, April 1st. It yeah. is so amazing. It's full of love. Um, if you want to be involved with that or want to attend that, text LOVE to 501-510-6020 and you will get involved. It's so fun. You don't want to miss it. Yeah, it's so fun. They're going to send you like a sign up sheet and then mm -hmm. you can also choose which one you want to help with. There's... Yeah. Um, there's like an indoor one in case like you don't want to get too hot or too cold or whatever. And then there's one where we're doing like yard work and stuff if you want to do some like labor stuff. So yeah. it'll be really good. There's a lot um, of different options. So that'll be good. We also have first Wednesday coming up. Not this Wednesday, obviously, but the first Wednesday of April, which is April 5th. And that's at 7 p.m. And we just started this last month, but... It is so awesome. Yes. So we have kids going on back there, and they have, like, a whole themed party every time, which is so fun. Last month was March Madness, so everyone wore their uh, jerseys and stuff. <laughs> so cute and fun. And really, it's just a chance for us to get together, kind of like a Wednesday night service. That's pretty much what it is. But we get to, you know, go a little deeper in worship and not really worry about, you know, Oh, we have second service coming up yeah. after this. Oh, we need to get to lunch. But it's really a time where we can lean in and, you know, go a little deeper. So it's really, really a great opportunity yes. to seek God together. And then we also have Easter. Yes, April. 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 Easter is coming up on April 9th. I'm going to say something really fast. Um, but that reminds me of April. So during we do a huddle before, <laughs> at 9, 10 every day. And Teddy did it, and he did a great job. But he said, what did he say? He oh. said, Christer or something. Christer. He, it was, uh, yeah. Christer, he was yeah. Talking, yeah, Christer. Christer. <laughs> and April. So those are the funnies of the day. Yep. But anyway, go ahead. But yes, Easter at Encounter is always so much fun. We're going to have three services, 830. 830. 830. And, and 1130. Yes. And so be prepared for that because they will be different, but you'll want to invite anyone you can. Invite friends, family, random people you meet in Walmart. Yeah. Invite everyone you can. Yes, it's going to be really awesome, and they'll talk a little bit more about it, but if you're, like, nervous to share the gospel, this is a perfect opportunity for you to, you know, invite someone, and then they get the gospel from us. You know, yes. Not us. Not us. From them. But, <laughs> yep, yeah, so service is about to start. Worship is awesome today. Have a wonderful Sunday, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, good morning, Encounter Church. How are we doing? Let's just stand to your feet, put your hands together, let's worship God.
together give God some praise today oh you can do better than that let's open our mouth and give God some praise come on lift your hands to heaven right now we're gonna go back into this song because I believe there's power in the name of Jesus oh I, I may be the only one here let me talk to the worship team I believe there's power in the name of Jesus everything you need is available in the name of Jesus so if you came in here today battling depression, begin to speak the name of Jesus. If you came needing healing in your body, begin to speak the name of Jesus. If you've got lost loved ones, begin to speak the name of Jesus. Because at that name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, Jesus Christ is Lord. Do you believe that? Come on, do you believe that? Come on, let's lift our hands to heaven one more time and love him. Just lean into him right now. Come on, just lean into him right now. Just lean into him right now. Jesus, we speak your name. Over our family, we speak your name. Over our finances, we speak your name. Over our children, we speak your name. Over our mental health and our emotions, we speak your name. Come on, somebody say the name of Jesus. Sing it, sweet. Shout Jesus from the mountain. 
Put your hands together one more time and just lift up the name of Jesus. Wow. Turn around, high five about three people. Tell them you're glad to see them at Encounter Church today. Are you glad to be in God's house today? I said, are you glad to be in God's house today? You can be seated. You guys are a lot more awake than first service. It's good to see you here this last day of spring break 2023. How many of you guys had a good week? You had a good week? All the teenagers are saying yes. All the parents are like, thank God for school tomorrow. It's such a bittersweet moment, isn't it? But we're so glad you're here. Everybody's watching online. Thank you so much for allowing us to come into your home, into your business, into your car, wherever you happen to be right now. We honor you, and we're so glad that you are spending this time with us. Come on, guys in the room, welcome them with us. They can feel like they're a part of Encounter. What's going on here? If you are a guest online or in the room with us, we would love to say thank you for being here and being a part of what God's doing. You can respond online right now, and they will give you some direction on how you can receive a gift that we want to get to you. Just tell you thank you for being with us. If you're in the room and you're a first-time guest and the seat back in front of you is a Connect card, we would love for you to take a moment, fill that out, Take it to the Welcome Center. And again, we've got a gift we want to give you, tell you thank you for being here with us this amazing time of year. We are building up to Easter, guys. We are, we are kicking off Cross Equals Love today. You see the stage uh, backgrounds, man, it just looks amazing. We're, we're reminded of what the cross really means today. And I love this time of year. We are two weeks away from Easter. That means two things are happening in the next two weeks. Next Saturday, actually this coming Saturday, let me say it that way so nobody misunderstands me. This coming Saturday is Love Day. Everybody say Love Day. It's going to be a great time together where we show the love of Jesus Christ outside of these four walls. You can text the word love to 501-510-6020. In fact, get out your phone, do it real quick. You're not signing up for anything at that moment. You are seeing the options that are available. So go ahead and do that. You're going to get a text back and everybody's phones are going to buzz. And you're going to ding real quick and everybody's going to know that you did it. No peer pressure whatsoever. Uh, but we would love for you to do that. And you can see some of the options of how you can be involved with Love Day this this Saturday going to be a fantastic time. We've got some options for you. We're doing some stuff with Habitat for Humanity and just different things that are going to be there. We would love for you to be a part of that. And then Easter Sunday, everybody say Easter Sunday. Two weeks away, Easter Sunday, we are doing special services for Easter, 930, 10, and 1130. And I promise you, you're going to want to get here early to get a seat because it is going to be a fantastic day. We're going to have lots of fun. One thing I did fail to mention first service I want to make sure you guys know about is also not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday is our first Wednesday service. We'll be doing communion together. It's going to be a great time. Uh, it's going to, I mean, what an amazing time of year to do communion together, to be on first Wednesday right before Easter and remember what uh, the price that Jesus paid for us. All right, last announcement, and then we're going to get into our tithe and offering here. In the seat when you came in, if you don't see it, it's because you're sitting on it. So reach underneath and pull out. All right, there's this little invite card. Now, we're going to assume that all y'all are going to be here for Easter already. So this is not for you. 
This is for you to put in someone else's hand. So take it with you. I'm going to remind you before you leave so you don't leave it. We've got plenty of them. If you want some more, grab all you want. Just don't throw them in the floorboard of your car because they're not getting anybody saved in the floorboard of your car. But let's get it in somebody's hand that we know needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to partner with you. You know people we don't know. You have influence over people we do not have influence over. And so you may be going, man, I don't know. I'm just not like an evangelist person, and I don't know how to share the gospel. I don't feel comfortable doing all that. We're going to partner with you. You get them in the house. You reach out to people that you know that we don't have influence with. You get them in the house for Easter Sunday. And with this worship team and the communicators, the service hosts, and speaking the message, we're going to present the gospel of Jesus in a way that they're going to want to know who Jesus is. And so you're going to see your friends and your family, your loved ones saved on Easter Sunday because you took the time to partner with us to do that. All right. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, my memory's not failing me. Yes. Chapter 9, verse 6 says this. Remember, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And here's the response from God. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Two things I want you to get from the scripture. Here's the first one. Favor attracts favor. If you want God's favor in your life, you have to start it. There's an act of faith that has to take place. God always responds to faith. He doesn't respond to need. If God responded to need, there would never be anyone go hungry. But God responds to faith. And so when you walk in favor, meaning in order to have faith, uh, in order to have favor, you have to have faith because you have to show it to someone else. You have to believe that God is able to sustain you. So the first thing you do is you show favor to those that are around you. It may be in big ways. It may be opening the door, let somebody head ahead of you. But you begin to show favor, it attracts favor. The second thing I found from this verse is that generosity attracts generosity. Now, I tried an analogy first service, and I've been debating whether or not to do it second service, because first service really took us a while to get this one. But you know you know how a magnet opposites attract, right? Okay, so we're going to work through this. Bellamy, you're going to help me, because he's a science teacher. He's a doctor or plays one on TV or whatever. But Okay, so look, look, look. If you have two magnets and you put both positive poles together, what happens? Okay, so we got uh, this side actually knows. Let's go to this side. If you go, if you if you put the two uh, 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 same poles, positive poles or negative poles, whichever, you put them together, what happens? They repel, okay? If you put opposite poles together, they attract, right? Now, that is the way it is when it comes to polarity and it comes to a magnetic field. But in the kingdom of God, it's a kingdom of opposites. In the kingdom of of God, when you want when you want to attract something, you have to introduce the same thing, not the opposite thing. So, if you want to have a friend, the Bible says you've got to show yourself friendly. So, if you want to be have friends, people tell me about, I don't have any friends. It's because you're mean. Be friendly, you would have friends. All right? Are you with me? I, I want people to show me kindness. How do I how do I attract kindness? Okay, we, this side's with me. I, I don't know. Just the teenagers, I don't know. But I'm going to go back to this side just a little bit, okay? If, 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 I, if I need God's blessing on my life, the way that I receive from God is that I give to God. And it attracts the same. The Bible talks, calls about, or talks about um, sowing seed. And, and when you sow seed, you receive the harvest based on the seed. Only a complete dumb person would would sow watermelon seed and say, I really, really, really want strawberries. No, you're going to get watermelon. In fact, some of y'all right about now, after the pumpkins were thrown out from th- uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving time, all that, you're starting to see something to prop up from all this water and this sun, right? It is not going to be corn going to be a pumpkin. Why? Because that's what you sowed. Some of you guys need to realize that when you sow into good ground, 
God begins to bring back into your life, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And what did we just read? He is able to bless you abundantly in all ways, at all times, and in all ways, so that you can abound in every good work. Everybody say every. That means everything you could do, God begins to bring favor because favor attracts favor and generosity attracts generosity. But there's a kryptonite to this. There's something that will absolutely stop the flow of God's blessing in your life, and that is selfishness. The moment you say, God, I'm keeping it, it's all about me, God says, that's fine. We have this thing called free will. You can do that, but I can't bless you. The way that we receive God's blessing is when we approach with open arms and we say, God, I'm here to give you all. And so as we stand together, I want to pray with you. We're going to pray for these needs that have been brought in. On that Connect card, there's a place for prayer requests. There's also a prayer card in there. We're going to pray for some of these needs together today. The ushers are going to come forward. We're going to serve you. Um, there are four ways to give on the screen. You can see those. Take advantage of any one of those and the ushers that are here as well. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. I thank you for being able to worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you for your greatness that never fails and that when we speak your name, you show up. I thank you, God, that enemy, the enemy has to tremble when we say your name, that, that, that depression must leave when we just whisper your name. God, I ask you as we speak your name in faith right now over these requests that have come in this week. God, for this lady that is in ICU right now, that family members are literally standing around trying to, to pray and have faith and believe, but um, God, their, their faith gets stretched at times. God, we ask you to increase their faith. We ask you to bring healing to her body. We ask you, God, to let peace that passes understanding come into that ICU room right now. In Jesus' name. God, we ask you to touch every marriage that is trying to, to fight together and to keep themselves in place and to, to fight for their family. We talked about a couple weeks ago. God, I ask you to bless them right now. God, I ask you to touch those that are standing in the middle of economic uncertainty in this world all around that are trying to figure out how to make every dollar count and stretch. We ask you to bring blessing and favor in their life. God, I ask you to bless those that are struggling with depression and anxiety and stress right now. God, that you would speak peace in Jesus' name, that we would speak your name in every situation. We love you and we thank you for it. We ask you to bless this tithe, this offering, and this giving in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Usher's going to serve you. Let's worship God together one more time.
out there as homeless people, some of them were granted a house, an apartment, home is not given to everyone. We're so, so grateful, Jesus, that you give us home here in your presence and your love and your mercy. So grateful to have home and worship and song and that name. Jesus, we just thank you for that, that truth. give Jesus some praise this morning. He's bringing us home every day. Y'all, please be seated. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. We're going to have some announcements up on the screen, and then we'll be back to the Welcome to church. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. If today is your first Sunday with us, we have a free gift for you. There is a card in the seat back in front of you. Fill it out and take it to the Welcome Center in the lobby. We want to say hello. You're invited to Growth Track. Growth Track is your place to find out more about Encounter and how your specific gifts fit into the body of Christ. Childcare and dinner are provided. To sign up, text GROW to 501-510-6020. Easter is coming. eKids is accepting donations of plastic eggs and non-meltable candies for our annual Easter egg hunt. Turn them in at the eKids counter, and thanks so much for your help. Access Conference is coming up. All current 7th through 12th graders are invited. Text AXIS to 501-510-6020 to receive registration information and to sign up for updates regarding fundraisers. Mark your calendars. Our second annual Love Day is coming up on Saturday, April 1st. Love Day is when we show the love of Jesus to our community by completing different acts of service. To volunteer, text LOVE to 501-510-6020. Who are you inviting to church this Easter? Let's share the good news of Easter with our community. Invite cards are available in the lobby. Now it's time for the message. For the consideration of those around you, keep moving to a minimum. Get out your notebooks, lean in, and let's grow together in Him today. Hey, there we go. Hey, I have to address something that was mentioned in the announcement videos, and um, that is that we ask you guys to keep your movement to a minimum because we only want a movement of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm so sorry. I like I told first service I've been hanging out with James too long, and now my jokes are just, like, getting worse and worse, you know? It's like, oh, God, help me, deliver me. Uh, but, it, you guys, I am so excited to be here speaking to you guys this morning. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brian Adams. I am one of your pastors here. Yeah, hey, yeah, there we go. Man, and it is always, always such an honor and a privilege to be up here speaking to you guys about God's love, getting to dig into that and figure out a little bit more about that. Is anybody excited about God's love this morning? <clears throat> Look, like I said, my name's Brian Ask Brian, no, calm down. You better be careful. You better be careful. Brian Adams, and uh, I am one of your pastors here, even though, you know, sometimes it's hard to believe with things like that happening in service, you know. Uh, but today we are starting our series, Cross Equals Love. Anybody like Cross Equals Love? Come on, y'all can do better than that. <clears throat> Cross equals love. That is one of my favorite series that we do. And I actually, I want to wake you guys up a little bit. So if you can do me a favor, when I point to you guys, can you say cross, you say equals, and you say love. All right, can we do this? Can we? I know it's weird, but I've never had people cheer before me because I'm terrible at every sport I've ever played. So come on, let's do this. Let's cheer for Jesus this morning. Are you ready? Cross equals love. Cross equals Love. All right. I love it. I love you guys so much. That's awesome. I, she was doing the wave. I'm like, yes, Lord Jesus, lift those holy hands. Oh, my gosh. I don't even know what's wrong with me, y'all. Something happened. You're in worship. And we were just like, Jesus, Jesus. I'm like, yes, Jesus, just more, more, more. I'm so excited about this Cross Equals Love series. 
And not just because um, it's a fun series, right? Like, if you if you don't like fun, this might not be the church for you, you know? If, if you don't like fun, hang around. We'll get you to like fun, all right? Uh, but I love this Cross Equals Love series for so many reasons, but probably the greatest reason that I can think of is because I can't think of a better message for the church to send to the world, right? And the amazing thing about this series is it's not just Encounter Church that, that's preaching this series. It's a lot of churches around the world, and we're all gathering together in unity. How many, how many of you know that there's not a whole lot of unity in the church sometimes? Like, we have all these different denominations and all these things that we disagree on, but one thing that I think we could all agree on is that the fact that the cross equals love. Like I said, what a better message to spread to the world, right? So this morning, we're talking about the cross equals love. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I do love feedback, so if I ask you a question, like, you can actually answer. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a rhetorical deal. So when you think about the cross, when you see the cross, what do you think about? Church? Peace? Hurt? Okay. That's an honest answer. I like honest answers. Pain? Hope? Love? Anybody else? Tons of good answers. Uh, We think about things like forgiveness, sacrifice, redemption, right? But I think that there's also some of us that believe in that hurt. We believe in judgment. When we look at that cross, we see religion. I think that mankind has taken this amazing symbol of love throughout time and used it for things of our own agenda that we've pushed and we've made people see something other than the cross equals love. And I'm here today to say that stops now, right here with us. Because I can think of nothing better than to do than to spread this message of the cross equals love. So today we're going to be starting in Matthew 8. Everybody say Matthew 8. I'm loving Matthew. Uh, For those of you that need a small group, this is a shameless plug. Uh, We lead like a small, small group, a small, small group or a large, small group. It's small. It's not large. It's a small group of people that are young adults, and it's not just exclusive to young adults. If you're an old person that likes to hang out with young people, like, come on. Uh, We may wear you out, but we're going to look into God's Word, and that week, I can't think of anything better to do together, right? Is somebody excited about God's Word today? Amen. So let's look at Matthew 8, verses 1 through 4. It says this. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, you see that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony. Wow. Wow, isn't God amazing how he can work? And Jesus just like literally took and healed this guy with his touch. Like he just touched him and the man was cleansed, healed of leprosy. Like I feel like sometimes there's things in the Bible that we don't understand fully, right? Like how many of you in here know somebody with leprosy? Just raise your hand. (laughs) I love David. He's like, yes. But look, we don't know anybody with leprosy, right? But if I asked you, how many of you in here know what COVID is? Like every, if you don't know what COVID is, just look, please don't ask anybody because I'm so tired of hearing about it. But look, leprosy was like the COVID of Jesus's day, okay? We have to understand that these people were, uh, had a disease that was terrible. I mean, leprosy back then was like an automatic death sentence, right? We look at so many different symptoms that these people would have been struggling with, with and this guy would have been desperate for a miracle. These people struggled with things like uh, it was a virus, right, that started inside of your body, but it would start to make itself shown. Like your skin would get all hard and scaly, and no no matter how much uh, lotion you put on it, it wouldn't get any better, right? You would get all these boils and pimples, but it wasn't just a boil and a pimple because you could treat it, and the root cause was still there. You still had that virus inside of your body. Amen. That's the Lord texting me right now, and he's like, speak. No, I'm just joking. That's not true at all. That is not true at all. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Like I said, I don't even know what's wrong with me today. I'm just super excited about this series. <clears throat> so we have to understand that this was a terrible disease that had, no matter what you did to treat the outside symptom, you still had an inside root cause. You still had that virus inside of you that you couldn't help but Jesus, man, with a touch of him, this man was cleansed. They suffered with so many different symptoms. Like, how many of you have ever heard, heard in here that your fingers, toes, and stuff fall off whenever you have leprosy? I mean, not just like on a normal daily basis, but like if you have leprosy, that's what happens to you, right? So we have to understand why this happens. The next symptom after your skin gets all hard and scaly and glossy is that you lose your nerve endings. And when you lose your nerve endings, you can't feel pain. That sounds good, right? Like, you're like, give me leprosy. I don't want to feel pain. That sounds awesome. But pain actually tells us when we're hurting our body, right? It's like, if you break your arm, you want to know it's broken so you can go to the doctor and get a cast and you're not just walking around with a noodle arm all the time. So we have to have that pain to show us when we're hurting ourselves. The next thing that would happen is these people's fingers and their toes would start to fall off due to the fact that they couldn't feel the pain. And this is a terrible fact. I don't even know why I'm sharing this with you. I didn't share it with first service. But they would put these people in villages, right, like little leper communities. Yeah, they, were, they would be like outcasts, right? But they said that these, these villages, these communities would be infested with rats. And when these people would sleep at night, the rats would come and eat their fingers and toes, and they wouldn't even be able to tell because they lost their nerves. What a terrible, terrible disease. Your neck would swell up. Your face would swell up. You'd start to look like the elephant man. Your nose would fall off. And it said that you could smell a leopard from 100 feet away. Can you imagine? I mean, Blake Beasley, he smells bad, but it's not 100 feet away bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm joking, Blake. I love you so much, brother. He did amazing. Can we give it up for Blake? He did a good job leading us in worship today. But as a leper, you couldn't even smell your own stench that you emitted that people could smell from 100 feet away because you had lost your nose or your sense of smell. Man, can you imagine how terrible, how hopeless, how desperate these people must have been? But guys, it doesn't stop there because they didn't just suffer from these physical symptoms. They also suffered from social symptoms. They were outcasts. Just like I was talking about, they were made to live in these communities, to live in these communities surrounded by people that struggled with the same disease they did. Every day, you're waking up, and you're seeing that guy that's two months ahead in his diagnosis than you, and his fingers are falling off, his nose is falling off, and he's slowly marching towards death, just rotting away, the living dead. The living dead, that reminds me, there was an author, his name was Richard Stein. He wrote a book called The Living Dead. This man even lost his vision due to leprosy. But you see, leprosy doesn't cause vision. The way this man lost his vision was that every morning he was waking up, brushing his teeth, washing his face, good things to do. You know, if you're a teenager in here, please do those things, okay? But he lost his vision because he didn't understand. He couldn't feel the pain of the scalding hot water that he was washing his face with every day, and he burned his own vision. Man, what a terrible, awful disease to be outcast, to have all these physical symptoms. And it doesn't even stop there, y'all. It gets even worse. Y'all say, man, I feel bad for these people. Like, I do. Because guess what? Even the religious of that time, out, they were outcasts to the religious of that time. The Jewish community, the Pharisees, even would throw rocks at them when they started coming near so they would go the other way. Man, doesn't that sound familiar? Don't we treat people that are sinning? the same way in the church. I'm here today to tell you that I believe today that we are spiritual lepers, and I'm going to tell you why. I believe that we suffer from those same symptoms. You know, we have this sin virus that starts inside of us, and we can't even help it. We're literally just born with it, and it starts to make itself visible in our body. We may not think that other people can see it, but they can our skin starts to get glossy and hard and scaly. Our fingers and toes may not fall off, but our marriages start to fall apart. Our relationship with our kids start to fall apart. We start to be blinded by the love of money. So many different symptoms that we can struggle with 
when we give in to this sickness, this disease, this virus inside of us of sin. But how many of you know that God made a way? When we look at this cross, we have to see love because of the way that God used it to cure us from our disease. Guys, when we look at the standard that's been set before us, we look at, let's just look at the Ten Commandments, right? Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments are laid out for us. Anybody give me any other commandments? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, commit adultery, lie, right? All these things. Yeah, that's a good one. I want you to stop and think about, like really think, how many of you have broken one of those Ten Commandments this year by showing? Yeah, a lot of us, right? What about in the past month? Past week? Possibly today? Before church this morning? But look, God made a way for us through the cross, right? That cross equals love. But look, it doesn't stop there. Jesus even goes further in the Sermon on the Mount. You know that message that we talked about earlier in Matthew, right before he heals this leper, he's given the best sermon ever preached. Like, it's not even a question. Don't even go there. Jesus preaches the most amazing message of all time, and he sets a different kind of standard for us. He said it's not even enough to not do these things, but we can't even think about it. He said if you look upon someone with lust, you've already committed adultery. He said, if you hate your brother, you've already committed murder. Man, I don't think any of us could raise our hand and say we hadn't done any of that in the past week, right? The standard that has been set for us is something that we cannot reach because we are spiritual lepers, and we have this sin virus inside of us that is slowly eating away. But God made a way. When we look at that cross, we can't see anything else but love. When we read in Matthew 5, verse 7, Jesus lays out a standard for us to enter into the kingdom of heaven with that, that Sermon on the Mount. And it's something that we can't even reach to because we're born with a sin virus inside of us. Psalm 51, verse 5 says that David even said he was even conceived and sin. Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the very heart within us is evil. So this morning, I, I know you're probably asking like, hey, this is cross equals love. Why are we talking about how terrible the people we are? Because so far, all we're talking about is like, hey, we're pretty desperate here. Like we're, we're like these spiritual lepers and we need a miracle of God. But I think that we need to understand for us to understand the depth of God's love, we have to understand the depth of man's depravity. We have to understand the fact that without him, we have nothing. Romans 3, verse 23 through 26 says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God, God's glorious standard. Yet God and his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in the present. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness for that he himself is fair and just. And he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe isn't that a good word? Come on, y'all. That's a better word than that. How, let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever heard somebody say, how can a loving God send someone? Come on, anybody ever heard that? How many of you asked that question yourself? How can a, I mean, it seems so against God's nature, right? It seems so against God's nature to send someone to hell. But I have to ask you a question this morning. I want you to think about a situation with me. What if you woke up one morning and you do your daily routine? You wake up, you have your prayer time, you spend time with God, hopefully. Then you go to work, you work all day, you're exhausted, you come home only to find the door open. When you open the door, there's 
Your house is wrecked. You've been robbed, right? But not only that, you find one of your family members murdered in your house. This is a dark place to go in. I'm just getting through. And not only do you find somebody murdered in your house, but you found that murderer there. What do you want to do to that person? That's the justice inside of us. Look, the word tells us that we're created in God's image, right? And God is a just God. So inside of us, part of us cries out for justice. And that's what that looks like. But let me take the situation even further. Let's just say you call the cops. They apprehend this person. They take them to jail. You await their court date. You go to their court date, and the judge calls them forward, and he says, look, I'm feeling love in you, and I'm just going to let you go. How would you feel? Angry. You'd feel robbed of justice, right? God is the same way. He has to bring judgment for the sins that we've committed in our lives. The word literally tells us that no sin ever committed will go without judgment. That's scary, right? Us being spiritual lepers and having this virus inside of us and not even being able to choose good because of the depravity that we're subject to. God's going to judge us. How many of you have ever been in, in trouble with the law before? I know I'm your pastor, but I've definitely been in trouble with the law. Me, for those of you that don't know, uh, me and my wife have struggled with a past addiction and I've had several court dates. But one that I remember like very vividly is that me and my wife had gotten in trouble and we had to go back to this court date. And this judge was very lenient on us. He let us pay a fine, and he gave us something called an overhanging sentence. Anybody know what an overhanging sentence is? An overhanging sentence is where they don't punish you for the crime. You have to pay a, a fine, but that, that crime stays right above your head on your record. That way, if you mess up again, they can take it and hold it against you and charge you for both. We have, as spiritual lepers, an overhanging sentence. God has to bring the judgment for our sin to us, right? Isn't that scary to know? Like, not only are we spiritual lepers and we can't help but sin and we have this virus inside of us that's tearing us apart, our lives are falling apart, and now we're going to have to deal with the judgment for these sins that we've committed? Man, that sounds pretty rough, doesn't it? Matthew 8, verse 4 tells us, Then Jesus said to him, See that you don't tell anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. You know, when I read through this passage, and I think that we miss a lot of the little stuff sometimes. Like, if, if you ever been reading the Bible and you read something, and you're like, why is that even in there? Like, that happens to me all the time, and I just have to, like, study, because I'm like, I, God, I don't know why you want, want to tell me this, but I don't believe that any word is in this, in this book right here by mistake. Not a single word. Every bit of it is God-ordained to teach us something. So we have to look into this. When we look into Matthew 4, or Matthew 8, verse 4, we look at that gift that was recommended for him, or that commanded that for him to give in Leviticus 14. It says, Then the priest shall order that one of the birds can be killed over a fresh water in a clay pot. He is then to take the live bird and dip it together with the cedar wood and the scarlet yarn and the hyssop and the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. Does anybody even understand what's going on? Neither do I. Okay, so I had to go into this even more. All right, so back then, when you were a leper and you wanted to be cleansed, you had to go to the priest, and the priest would take a bird, like two doves, and if you were broke, then they took two pigeons, okay? And they took these birds, and they would kill one over a pot, and they would take the other and dip it in that blood and sprinkle it on the leper to show that they were clean. Doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound like what Jesus did for us? Man, doesn't that show a perfect symbol of love? How the cross equaled love. You see, just like God had made a plan for lepers, like we have to understand that between Leviticus and Matthew, that's a long period of time, right? In that long period of time, nobody had ever been cleansed of leprosy except for this man. God made a way for this man thousands of years before he even came to be cleansed to be clean, cleansed and be healed of leprosy, he made a way, just like he made a way for us. Thousands of years before he even created mankind, he was going to make a way for us. He was sending Jesus to die on the cross so that we could be cleansed of our spiritual leprosy. Look, our salvation doesn't come through two birds. It comes in the form of a baby in a manger, destined for a terrible, horrible death on a cross. 
so that his blood could be shed, but not in vain. Every drop of blood that he shed was for you. It was for you. Every whiplash that he endured was for you. The crown of thorns pressed into his head was for you. What an amazing symbol of love. How could we ever look at the cross and think about anything else than love? Isn't that the most beautiful symbol of love you've ever seen? What an amazing display of God's love for his children that Jesus made us made a way for us that day. And you know that overhanging sentence that I was talking about? All that wrath that was waiting to be poured out on us was poured out on Jesus. He came to earth. He lived a sinless, spotless life. But all in a moment, that wrath was poured out on a spotless lamb for us. How can we look at that cross and see anything else but a symbol of love? the greatest symbol of love ever shown in the history of ever. Romans 4, 27 through 28 says, Where then is our boast? It is excluded because of what? Law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from works of the law. You know, I think we get this messed up a lot. I think a lot of times as Christians, we believe that Jesus died on the cross and he brings us salvation, right? Like how many of us can agree on that at this point? That Jesus died, that's amazing. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Who, who believes that Jesus died on the cross to bring us salvation? But look, a lot of times we leave that power right there and we don't believe it goes any further. I think that where we mess up is we forget this in our day-to-day life. How many, how many parents do I have in the room? Anybody got kids? Look, if your kid came to you, if my daughter came to me and said, Dad, I I cleaned my room. Do you love me now? I'd be insulted because nothing, I mean nothing that my children do can change my level of love for them. That's the same way that God views us. That's why he made a way for us on that cross that day. That's what it's all about for us to be able to have that relationship with him. But so many times we allow the devil to throw those failures in our face. And when he does, it distracts us. And we don't think that we're worthy of God's love. But guess what? The cross equals love. When we look at that cross, we have to understand that he went completely out of his way. He did everything he could. He paid the highest price ever paid for anything in the history of ever for you. He endured everything that he did endured on the cross for you. So, one of the, my favorite things about this scripture that we're looking at, Matthew 8, verse 4, the leper cries out to God, to Jesus, and he says, if you are willing, Lord, you can heal me. You can cleanse me. Man, I'm here to tell you today, God is willing. God is willing. How desperate are you for a miracle in your life? How desperate are you to be cleansed? Because God is saying, I am willing. Do you know what the last words God Jesus spoke on the cross before he died? He said, it is finished. But if we translate it, that, it says, paid in full. I believe that's the same as him saying, I am willing. I am willing to be whipped. I am willing to be nailed to a cross. I am willing to have my beard pulled out of my face, to be mocked, to be spit on for you. You see, to understand the level of love that God showed us that day on that cross, we have to understand how desperate we were and the need of it. Just like that leper was in desperate need of Jesus. I think sometimes it's easier for us to proclaim that we love God than it is for us to proclaim that God loves us. Am I right? Has anybody ever been there before? Man, sometimes it's so hard for me to believe that God could love somebody like somebody that wakes up and messes up daily. God made a way. That cross equals love, right? 
What better message could we send to the world than the fact that that cross equals love? Come on, guys, say it with me. The cross equals love. There's no doubt in my mind that this miracle happened directly after the Sermon on the Mount because Jesus was trying to send a message. He said, hey, I know I set this high standard and I know that you'll never be able to meet it. But if you come to me, I am willing. But will you come to him today? I want to leave you with one last scripture. John verse, or John chapter 15, verse 30. Says, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. I want you to think, would you lay down your life for your friends? You know, for me, when I put it into context and I think about my children, there's no doubt in my mind that I would tell somebody to take my life over my children, right? Because I love them. I love them desperately. But what about for your enemies? What about for the people that were beating you? What about for the people that were nailing you to a cross? That's what Jesus did. Even when we were his enemies, he still made a way. He said, I am willing. It is paid in full. I love these people so much. I want to desperate. I'm so desperately in love with them and I want a relationship with them so much that I'm willing to endure this cross. So with every head bowed and every eye closed in this room, this morning my question to you is, are you desperate like that leper today? with your kids is falling apart? Are you desperate? Because God is willing. Reach out to him today and be I'm going to pray in just a moment. And when I pray, before I pray, I want to know who I'm praying for. So if this message spoke to you this morning and you want to reach out to God this morning and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, I'd ask that you raise your hand. Father God, I thank you so much for these people that had the courage to raise their hands this morning. God, that they had the courage, just like this leper, to say, God, I know I'm messed up. I know I'm I'm struggling with this, this virus, this sin virus that lives inside of me. But God, I know that you can cleanse me. And Lord, I know that you're willing. And he will say, I am. Father God, I ask that you would just give them another step of courage, Lord God. And at the end of this service, when we close out that all our prayer partners are up here, Lord God, that they would just come forward and we can work through that salvation process, Lord, because it's so much more than just a prayer. It's admitting that you are Lord of our lives. You want it all. And God, we're here to give it all to you. Now, I think there's another group of people in here this morning. I think there's a group of people who struggle with the power of the cross daily in their lives people who struggle with the enemy throwing their failures in their face, and they feel like they're not worthy of God's love. If that's you this morning, I'd ask that you just raise your hand so that we can be praying for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come on, this is your time to be honest. There's nothing wrong with it. You need prayer. If I'm being honest, this is me sometimes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Father God, I thank you so much for the courage that these people have raise their hand. I thank you for the spirit of boldness that you've given them in this moment, God. I ask that you would just help them to see themselves the way that you see them, God. God, that they are children that you desperately are in love with, so desperately in love with that you endured the cross to be able to have a relationship with them. God, how can we look at this cross and see anything else other than the cross equal love? Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to dive into your word and to get to know your love on a deeper level. Father, I ask that this wouldn't just be like another Sunday where we have somebody up here just talking to us, Lord God, but these words, that your words would take root in our heart and change our lives as we walk through our daily lives, Lord God. And not only would it change our life, God, but your spirit would overflow within us so much, Lord, that it would impact those around us. Father God, we love you. We thank you for your grace.
grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for this cross. God, we thank you so much for the fact that you endured the most painful death of all time for a bunch of spiritual lepers. God, we thank you. We worship you. In Jesus' name. God, God or guys, continue to worship with us. We're going to have a song. I ask that if you raise your hand, please come forward. If you have any need, whether that be physical healing, whether you're struggling with things in your life, there's people up here that want to pray with you. Please take advantage of that. The word tells us that there is power and agreement. So there's people up here willing to agree with you in prayer. Please take this opportunity to come up here and pray with one of us. I love you guys so much. Thank you all so much for allowing me to speak to you. I see bright crimson roads draped over the eyes A wide open tomb where they should Gotta be get used to the The children are singing and dancing The Father is welcome This is our home Roses in bloom Pushed up from the Heaven joins in with the glory sound And the great cloud of witnesses all gather round Cause the ones that were lost are finally found The Father is welcoming, this is our homecoming Scarlet sins had a crimson cross You nailed my dead to that old rugged cross people up here praying. We're going to continue to allow them to do that, but on your way out, a couple things. If you made a decision today to give your life to Jesus, we have a gift we want to give you. It's called the Life Book. You can get it from guest services, anybody that is working out there or at the Welcome Center, and they can put that in your hands. It's going to help you with next next steps, or if you just want to know more about a relationship with Jesus, this is a great resource that we want to give you for that. Also, don't forget, grab your card, take it with you, invite somebody to Easter services at Encounter. It's going to be a great time. We love you. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. If you need prayer, these prayer partners are going to be up here for a while for you. We love you guys. See you next week.